I entered the military in uh, April 24, 1950. I was 15. Uh, I had to fib a little bit about my age. I didn't really want to uh, see the Army. It's just that uh, back in those days, if you didn't go to school, then they, they were going to uh, send you to a home for the incorrigible. Otherwise, I wasn't a bad kid. I just didn't want to go to school. Uh, and my uncle said, well, we'll forge your baptismal records and put you in the Army. And that's what happened. We, uh, we forged my baptismal records, and uh, they bought that, and I was in the Army. Basic training was, uh, was for a city boy like myself, was really hard. Uh, the marching and the discipline, and especially the handling of weapons. Uh, have, having never fired a weapon, uh, it took some time for me to get the knack of shooting a rifle, especially almost a 10-pound rifle. But uh, it was difficult, but uh, you learn soon that uh, the, the camaraderie and the, and the friendships you, you develop uh, uh, they helped to spur you on. When the war broke out, they just took everybody they could to send over initially. And they, they stripped the units, the unit I was going, they stripped the units of all uh, non-commissioned officers, officers and personnel to fill the units that were going to Korea. And when, when I got to my unit, there was hardly anybody there. They were shipping people in from the States, and nobody knew anybody. Uh, but we were supposed to get together, and we, we trained for about, I think, about 30 days together. And, and then we got, uh, we got on board ships to make the invasion of Incheon with the 1st Marines. Uh, I didn't know anybody. I had never seen the weapon I was assigned to until I got aboard ship. And then I only fired it when I got aboard ship. We fired it off the, the fan tail of the ship we were on. Well, you know, the Marines uh, did the initial assault. Uh, the 7th Division came in behind the Marines. Uh, the Marines went in and uh, the regular landing craft that they did like in World War II, and the Army, we all came in on what they called LSTs, landing, landing ship tanks. Uh, but it, it was very hazardous for us because we had to get off the ship, uh, over, the, over the side on the nest with all of our equipment, onto these pitching and waving LSTs. Uh, but we finally made it safely. For the most part, yes. But it, it wasn't that bad, the landing itself. The Chinese intervened uh, in October of 1950. Now, I'm telling you this, but I didn't know this at that time. And I'm just going by uh, what I've read in the history and a lot of the people I've talked to. Uh, they intervened and uh, they, they first contacted the Chinese in, in October 1950. Uh, and they really didn't hit us hard until early November 19, 1950 when they hit the 1st Cavalry Division. Uh, that was on the west side of Korea. And they hit my unit and the 1st Marines really, really hard. In November, the late, the last part of November, 1950, and when there was, they say there was, I don't recall how many divisions, but they say two or three hundred thousand Chinese uh, come out of Manchuria across the border undetected. We were at say, our, a place called uh, Kotori. Uh, and w my unit was attached to the 1st Marine Division, uh, my company. And uh, the 1st Marine D Division headquarters was 11 miles north of there. 
at a place called Hagaroo. And the famous Colonel Puller, Chesty Puller, uh, dispatched my company, B Company 31st, uh, a company of Marines, and a, co a company of British Royal Commandos to help reinforce the 1st Division, Marine Division headquarters up there. Uh, and there was an 11-mile stretch of roads, and we got on that road and started going up that road in vehicles. Uh, and we hit a ton of roadblocks. The, the Marine Company, which was in the front, and the Royal Marines, the commandos, were in the middle, and my rifle company was in the rear. The first two companies got through, and our company was cut off and com completely surrounded. Uh, some of our guys got back to where we started, uh, but unfortunately I was in the front of that column, and we were cut off completely, and uh, a Marine Major, a fine, fine officer, uh, after fighting all night, uh, he surrendered our portion to the convoy. And there was, I don't, God, I don't know how many people we lost or how many people was captured, but there was quite a few. But most of, them, most of the Army company was, was destroyed. It was so cold, they say it was 30 to 40 degrees, degrees below zero. Uh, I was pretty well frozen up, my feet and legs. Uh, we marched from there uh, up to a, another holding area, which was quite a few miles away. Uh, and I got teamed up with a uh, British Royal Marine. And between us, we had one sleeping bag, uh, one Army summer sleeping bag. Uh, and this gentleman and myself, we used that sleeping bag, both of us, fully clothed in that sleeping bag. Uh, for the entire march. The times is awful harsh, I'll tell you. They, uh, uh, there, was, there was no food, there was no medicine. Uh, we was in the same camp with Father Capon, the famous priest. Um, and it was just, it, most of the time was uh, taken up uh, gathering firewood, going on uh, wood details, uh, Burial details. We lost a lot of people at that time through malnutrition, uh, disease, and died from the wounds. And that's how most of the time it's been the, the first six months. There's not a day goes by that I'm not in Korea or Vietnam. Not a day. and the guys that I had lost in, in both. I'm back there every day. I live a good life. Great wife, kids, nothing to complain about. And I do it again.